Golf course superintendents know that a key element to turf health lies in having the right amount of phosphorus in the soil. Phosphorus nutrient is essential for early seed establishment, deeper rooting, disease resistance, and stress recovery. Yet not every phosphorus fertilizer is the same. In an exciting preliminary study, turfgrass professor Beth Gertal compared conventional phosphorus fertilizers with Crystal Green. Here, Gertal shares the details of her research. The Crystal Green folks wanted to look at a couple different things. One, how well did their product work for establishing sprig Bermuda grass? And two, what happens to that phosphorus in the soil? What is the potential of that material to move out of a high sand root mix? So that's how we designed the study. So this is an example of our leaching facility here at Auburn University at the Turfgrass Research Unit. So we have 16 individual bins. Each of these bins is actually a 70 gallon Nalgene plastic cattle waterer. And we bury them in the ground and they're all level. And then we can put whatever sort of soil or greens mix or material we want in each bin. And then each bin is individually plumbed and drained down here to a collection chamber. So if it rains, everything or irrigates, everything goes through there and down into this five gallon gas can. And then once a week or more often, if it rains a lot, we pull this out, we get the total volume of leachate, and then we analyze for whatever nutrient we want in the leachate. In the case of this study, we were looking at phosphorus. All the phosphorus went on at the same rate, which I never have mentioned, was two pounds of P2O5 per thousand square feet with those different sources. So, four treatments. No phosphor at all, 100% crystal green, 100% triple superphosphate, and 66% crystal green, 33% uh, triple superphosphate. The turfgrass research team then applied four treatments to the plots and repeated each treatment four more times. Gertal says every week the researchers measured how much the Bermuda grass had grown, as well took soil samples and leachate samples to gauge phosphorus levels. What they found was surprising. While seed establishment levels were comparable between crystal green and the other treatments, Gertal says there was a significant difference in phosphorus retention in the soil. That was the really interesting part. Where it mattered was retaining phosphorus in the soil profile. So when the phosphorus source was crystal green, especially if it was all crystal green, it was not leaching. It was not being collected in the leachate. It was staying in the soil. Frankly, as a researcher, I was a little startled to see the big difference in pea leaching as affected by phosphorus source. Though the findings are still preliminary, Gertal says they will repeat the test for another year. The results are promising. What we are looking at is the idea of a sort of metered, slow-release source of phosphorus that might work well over time. We might be able to reduce our rate of phosphorus fertilization with something like a crystal green source and still get the same establishment of Bermuda grass over time. And since plant activated crystal green is sustainably produced from recovered nutrients, it's also a smart choice for turf grass managers looking to achieve environmental stewardship. If this preliminary data holds out and we can start to talk about the ability of a, of a phosphorus source that doesn't seem to be as prone to loss from the system, then you've got a tool that superintendents can use and know that they're protecting the environment, yet still supplying the nutrients to the plants.